30 seconds. Just 30 seconds to join us and just lift your voices. singing you were declaring yeah. Yeah. you were declaring to your atmosphere to your reality yeah. God you are yeah. able yeah. you were declaring yeah. to God you are able yeah. you are able yeah. you are able yeah. you are able yeah. what is he able to do Everything. well something for you what is he able to do what is he able to do for you what do you, what do you need him to do what do you need what do you still have need of he's given you everything what do you have need of Everything. Come on, say that again. Say that again. Somebody say that again. What is it that you still need when he said, I'm, I'm, I have supplied all of your needs? He said that I've given you all things that pertain to any need you could ever have. So, what is it that you still need? Nothing. The only thing, the only thing I need to do is worship. I have a need to worship. This is for somebody. This is for somebody. Uh, out of uh, Isaiah, the uh, the forty first chapter and the tenth verse, uh, he says, "Fear thou not." Come on, hallelujah! For I am with thee. For I am with thee. He said, "Be not dismayed. Don't give up. Don't lose heart." I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> Don't lose heart, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. So he's saying that somebody is trying to get qualified for something else. <laughs> You're, you're trying. You're trying to get qualified, and you're saying that you don't have to work that system. You don't have to work that system. Okay. This. This. This is. This is for for somebody, uh, because we're talking about being water. We know that the the word of the Lord is water that we need. The water of the word is going to quench quench your thirst. Um, and Isaiah 55. Uh -huh. Isaiah 55, uh -huh. verse 1. Now, remember, he said, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Some of you are in the process right now. Who's in the process of looking for? You're looking for a home, or you're trying to get qualified for a house? Mm -hmm. So, he says here, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the process, because it's going to be in that process that somebody else their prayer is going to be answered. You, you have no need of anything because he's already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness in Christ Jesus or through the knowledge of him who has called you to glory and virtue. Now, you know, every time he calls you, you always respond. When he's, We're talking about the same one who said, let there be, and there always was, and then he saw, and then he said. Uh -huh. So what's what's happening now is that you've had a vision. You got a vision for the house. Uh -huh. You got a vision for the provision. Whatever it is that you believe in God for, uh -huh. He says, as soon as you mature to this place, uh -huh. and sometimes the process has nothing to do with you, but everything to do with answering somebody else's prayer. Uh -huh. So the process is going to take you into a place where people are going to think that you've been cursed. When you know that you're the you're not just blessed, you are the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. You are the answer. You're not looking yeah. for the answer. You are the answer. Yeah. So the your the process, your process is going to take you into a, put you in a position to answer somebody else's prayer because now you're going to be in the same place as people who have no hope. Come on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Colossians one says 
that is Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So the only hope that anybody has, that some people have, to see the glory of God is going to be when you're in the position of the same place there. Well, Lord, I know that you've given me more than enough. I, I sow. I've been giving. I've been doing everything I'm supposed yeah, to do. Yeah. But I find myself broke, busted, and disgusted. Come on, Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank Anybody telling the truth? Amen. 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 All right. You ain't got no money in your account. Nah. Well, you got you got numbers, but they're in red. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so and you wondered, how did I get here? Uh -huh. But I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. How did I get here? Yes. And, and the Lord will say, I did this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He'll say, I did this. Okay, hold your place right there. And uh, if, if, if I gave you the place, uh, <laughs> if I didn't, I said 55, I did say that. Okay, hold your place right there. Yeah, hold your place right there. And we're going to go here to uh, 53. Verse 10. Isaiah. Isaiah 53, verse 10. And here the Lord is saying, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm -hmm. Well, who bruised When he's talking about Jesus, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. The, okay, the, the Lord, Father, uh, Yah, Yahweh, Ra, he's uh -huh. the one who put the Son, uh -huh. put his Son, he bruised his son. Wait a minute. He was wounded and bruised for our transgressions and our iniquities. Uh -huh. And we say that it was the people who did it, but God is saying, no, I did, I did that. that. Uh -huh. I did that. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief when thou shalt make thy soul an offering for sin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Got that. He had to be offered up. Uh -huh. His soul was an offering for our sin. He shall see his seed. Uh -huh. He shall prolong his days. Uh -huh. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Uh -huh. He's given everything to him. So, right. and, and that everything, and one of those things that's prospering is you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Prospering in every area of your life. Come on now. That's it. Every area of your life. So we're not going to be afraid. The Lord is my strength. He's helping me. Not going to try to blame the devil because the Lord says, no, I did this. I did this. This is a, this is a, your, your, your prayer has already been answered. Your request. He says also in Isaiah that I'm going to answer before you call. I know what plans I have for you. Isaiah also tells us, he says, your thoughts aren't my thoughts. Because I'm talking to you according to how you finish, not about your process. God's not concerned about your comfort, and he's not moved by your tears. That's why Jesus hung on the cross talking about, why have you forsaken me? I've been calling on you, and you didn't answer. you got to complete your process. All right, in uh, Isaiah 55, let's go to 55 now. 55 verse 1 he says listen everybody everybody who's thirsty anybody who's thirsty is anybody thirsty here come to the waters ye that have no what money you have no money but look at this list he said next uh, line he says come ye buy and eat Okay, wait a minute. You, you don't have any money, but I'm telling you to come. You don't have any money, but he's telling you to come. Go ahead and put yourself in position. Operate in faith. I know I've shared this with you. I don't know how many times, and even some of you online, maybe you're hearing this for the first time. But it was in the middle of the day, and the Lord told me to go to Walmart there and help Rome. Uh-huh. In the middle of the day, normally that, that was when Walmart was open 24 hours. Yeah. And I normally go there about 1 o'clock in the morning yeah. and uh, go fishing. I call it go fishing because I'm going fishing for souls. If you want to find somebody to get born again, go to Walmart. <laughs> Plenty of people. 
And, and so, but this time it's in the middle of the day, and I go into Walmart and I say, "All right, Lord, well, where's my assignment? Uh -huh. I know I'm here on assignment." And he told me to go and stand by a, a, a register, I want to say, I think it was 11. So I went and I just stood there, and he told me to go up to this, this elderly, this black woman, and, and offer to pay, or tell her that uh, you are to pay for everything in her basket. And so I went up to her and I said, ma'am, the Lord just spoke to me, and he told me to pay for everything in your basket. And she said, I don't need your money. And, and I said, well, it wasn't about a need. Right. This the Lord told me to pay for your stuff, and I just okay. want to pay for your stuff. Right. And she says, well, no, I don't need you to pay for my stuff. Why don't you go out and feed the hungry? I said, we got folks doing it. Uh -huh. Why don't you go buy clothes or something? And see, if you had clothes, I'd buy them. But, but you know, he just told me to do this. She said, well, I don't want your money. I don't need it, and I don't want it. Now, people are gathered. We're at Walmart, so, you know, if yeah. somebody's raising their voice at Walmart, you got a crowd. So this lady was raising her voice to me, and she's and, and so there was a crowd. And, and how many of you know that a preacher loves a crowd? Uh -huh. <laughs> and so now there's a crowd. There are people listening. Right, come on. And uh, and so and and so uh, I said to her, I said, "Ma'am, okay, you were just saying on Sunday. When is it going to be my turn? Uh -huh. When am I going to get blessed?" Uh -huh. And she said, "Yeah, I said that." And I said, just yesterday, you was reading in Luke 6.38, where the Lord says that he's going to do it. And I'm just, now I'm just talking to her uh -huh. about things that she's done. And I, said, and I said, and the Lord sent you that help because he said that he's going to give. When you give, it's going to be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, uh -huh. and running over, where the Lord caused people to heap unto your bosom. And I said, the Lord is keeping his promise to you right here in Walmart, and you're rejecting it. Wow. As I said, you've rejected this promise. Uh, being fulfilled, you don't have the right to ask him for anything else. Uh -huh. And I went on to the next person in line. Uh -huh. And by the time I got to that next person, this woman was putting stuff on the belt, and her husband was right there with her, uh -huh. and standing at the basket, he said, man, listen, I don't even believe in your God, but you can pay for my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and his wife just looked at him, and he's still going. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and he said, well, maybe, maybe, and maybe there's something to this. He said, you know, my wife was telling me that we need to get to Walmart right now. And, uh -huh. and the Lord is saying, because his wife was saved. Uh -huh. And she'd been sharing with her husband, sharing her faith with her husband. Uh -huh. and, uh, and she said, we have to get to Walmart right now uh -huh. and get everything that we need. Uh -huh. And he said, why are we going when we got no money? Yeah, yeah. We got no money, uh -huh. nothing. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can max out on your negative, yeah. you know, for the, yeah. you know, you can do that. Yeah. I was hoping y'all would say, no, I didn't know you can max out. <laughs> but everybody knows you can max yeah. out. You can only get so much bread. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they ain't going to, they ain't going to, they ain't not going to charge you another 34 $35 or whatever they charge you. Uh, but, but what got me, and it didn't dawn on me until after the fact. Uh -huh. what I had just witnessed uh -huh. and what you're hearing and maybe somebody needs to hear it again uh -huh. after reading Isaiah 55 uh -huh. uh, 1 and 2 uh -huh. that this man who did not believe in God uh -huh. said of his wife who was a woman of faith uh -huh. yeah. we have to get to the store now we got to go to Walmart right now uh -huh. and get everything that we need uh -huh. And she's putting the stuff on the belt, mm -hmm. knowing I got no money to pay for anything. Yes. But because the Lord said, go get it, yes. she got it, got in line, uh -huh. and she's putting it on the belt yes. like she got money, but she got no money. Oh wow. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. That is the way. Are you hearing this? Yeah. yeah. This really happened. Yeah. She had no money, but they heard the conversation of the with me and the older lady, and because the lady got loud. Maybe the Lord picked that woman because it was somebody who had to be loud enough. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come when on. people are telling your business, it's got to be somebody yeah. that's willing to be loud enough yeah. so that the, everybody can get you, you can get everybody's attention right. so the glory of the Lord can be revealed in your life. Yeah. 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 
Yes. He's saying, why am I, why are you putting me on blast? Why am I, why am I, why do I have to be embarrassed? All right. Come on, Pastor. Why is everybody talking about my business? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because the Lord wants everybody to see what he's getting ready to manifest yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't going to be like this much longer. Uh -huh. you, Matter of fact, you got to get the mindset when you start thinking the way God thinks and you start seeing what God sees. And when you think what God thinks and see what he sees, you'll be saying what he said. Amen. When you say what he said, you're going to see what he saw. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You're going to see what he saw, and then you're going to say just like he said, oh, that's good. Yeah. You'll be looking at your life from this point forward saying, oh, that's good. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, you don't need no money. If you are thirsty for him, when you're thirsty for him, when I'm thirsty, I go get something to drink. By the time you're thirsty, it means that you've been depleted. You're already dehydrated. So when we get to the place where we're thirsty for God, we have already dehydrated. All right, that was for somebody. I need to get to this part. I only got a few minutes left now. Ooh, that was I, I got a few minutes left. God. Agapeo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Agapeo. Anybody? It's, it's worth $100 if you can tell me right now. I can't even see y'all responding online right now because ain't nobody sitting there, so I don't know who's doing what. Agapeo. Is it All right, yeah, it's Greek. It's Greek. It, it's love. It's love. another word for love. Yeah. It's another word for love. All right, so the agapeo is love in a social or moral sense. Social or moral sense. Google moved a little bit too slow for you. <laughs> it's love in a social or moral sense. Agape. Agape, we're familiar with. Right. That's still love, but it's affection and benevolence. Okay. Affection and benevolence. Affection is gentle feeling uh, of, of fond or fondness or liking. A gentle feeling, fondness or liking. Benevolence is the quality of being, uh, of well being. You know, I'm, I'm doing well. It's the quality of well being and kindness. The quality of well-being and kindness. Mm -hmm. Why am I talking about love? Mm -hmm. it's, it's because God's love is for you. Yeah. We've read, I don't know how many times in uh, in, in, in the First Corinthians. Matter, matter of fact, we might as well just turn there real quick. Turn to First Corinthians chapter 13. We're going we're gonna to see something real quick. Uh, verse 4. Read the whole thing. Yep, uh, 1 Corinthians. As a matter of fact, while you're still, while you're turning, I'm going to read uh, the first three verses. For though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal, meaning I'm just making noise. If I don't have love, I'm just making noise. All right? And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains uh -huh. and have not love, I am nothing. Uh -huh. I am nothing. It's as though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, if I don't have love, it profits me nothing. It profits me nothing. Yeah, did, does anybody remember, just put your finger right there. Does anybody remember when Jesus is talking about the, the end? He's talking about judgment. And he's, he's talking about the sheep and the goats. And, and he's, he's talking about uh, the, the things that you'd have to do. And he says that whatsoever you have done to the least of these, you've done unto me. And he says that, uh, he says, listen, you, you, you're able to make it because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And, and he says, well, when did, when did we see you? Hungry. When did we see you thirsty? It says, whatsoever you've done to the least of these, you've done unto me. And then there's others who he's talking to, and, and they say, 
well, you know, they're feeling pretty good because they've done all these other works. They've done everything, uh, but they did it out of self. They didn't do it out of love. He doesn't recognize anything that's not done out of love, right. uh, out of well-being, a genuine a feeling of well-being, because I really care about you. Yes. And, it, and it's about you, and I'm going to put you first. Yes. So if you didn't do it out of that heart, then what Jesus said to them is depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Yeah. So wait a minute, but we healed in your name. Uh-huh. Yeah, we cast out devils in your name. Uh-huh. So don't get moved because somebody can lay hands on folks and people are getting healed. Yeah. If they're mean as hell, they ain't worth nothing. Right. I mean, if they're mean and nasty, <laughs> they ain't worth much. Right. No, I meant hell. Yeah. Right. If they're mean and nasty, they ain't worth much. Right. Don't be moved by what God doesn't even see. Right. He doesn't even recognize you get no credit when your heart isn't right when you're serving. We can come in here and we can preach and teach and we can feed the hungry, but if we're doing it just to meet a, a quota or something that we've, we've set and identified as ministry, and we're not doing it out of the heart of love, then it's not worth it. I mean, it's going to put food in somebody's belly. It's going to make some people happy. It's going to bless some folk. It's going to fulfill some prayers. But it's not going to benefit us at all. Right. It's curing your place. <laughs> Say that again. It ain't curing your place. That's it. That's it. So, so he's looking for love. Yeah, yeah. He's looking for love. To those people who do all of the work, casting out devils, healing the sick, raising the dead, sight to the blind, feeding the hungry, going into the prisons, visiting those who are who are who are locked up and going into the hospitals and visiting the sick and doing all of these things that we're supposed to be doing anyway but they're not doing it out of love he says you're a worker of iniquity i don't even know you who are you anyway how'd you get in my house <laughs> depart from me your heart wasn't right so though you do all of these things, you can speak with tongues. Yeah. The tongues of men and of angels. Right. God is yeah. saying, I'm not impressed. Right. Come on now. You can, you can do all of these things. You can give your body to be burned. What great sacrifices you've made. Mm-hmm. And God is saying, you are wasting your time. Yeah. <laughs> when you do all of these things and you don't love. Uh-huh. You don't love. Come on. Come on. Verse 4 says, this is, this is the character of love. Yeah. Yeah. This is the character of love. Love suffers long. And while love is suffering, it's still kind. Love envy it not. I am really happy for you. Right. Love doesn't envy. Mm-hmm. Love vaunteth or doesn't push itself up. You ever be telling somebody something good that you experience and they got to they gotta trump that with something yeah. better that they experience? Yeah. Yeah. Man, Lord, you just found $20. I found $100. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. And Lord delivered you from a, from, a, from a cold. And I was lame in my left foot. Couldn't feel nothing on, the, on my big toe on my right foot. But the Lord healed me one day. Man, shut up. Just be happy for me for a minute. Just for a minute. Celebrate with me. Yeah. All right. And he says. It's not puffed up. Love does not behave itself unseemly. Love seeketh not her own. Love is not easily provoked. Uh Uh-oh. Short fuse, no fuse at all. You know what I'm talking about? Who got a short fuse? Who got a short fuse? You don't want to raise your hand, do you? All right, okay. There you go. It don't take much. It don't take much. You, you can be walking away from somebody just talking stupid, then they say something, and that was the one. That was the one, because you stopped. What'd you just say to me? Oh, now it's on. It's bad when you got to think about it. That's, that's it. That's it. If you're going to be crazy enough to say it again, oh, it's just, you know, something to happen. 
<laughs> All right. It, it think no evil. So that I mean that love doesn't get easily provoked. Right. right. People can say everything and they can conclude their nasty comments with your mama. Oh, look at y'all. Y'all just set up like, what? Who's mama? My mama's sitting right here, but I still jack you up over there. Take it back. Now, that's old school right there. Everybody got some. You might not, you know, everything they're saying about your mama might be true, but because they said, your mama, we got to fight. We ain't talking no more. <laughs> Your mama, that's a, that seems like an old one. It seems childish, but you know, it still does something to you. 50, 60 years old, and it still, it still gets your attention. My what? <laughs> but he's saying when you're walking in love, doesn't get easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. My goodness, we can just stop there and just replay the the uh, the Zoom Bible study on uh, on Wednesday night, and we can just let that play, and that'll preach from right, this word right here. This in, in iniquity. Now get this thing about iniquity. Iniquity is not sin. Right. Iniquity is not sin. In the in the book of in the book of Ezekiel, the twenty eighth chapter it talks about the prince of Tyre, and we know that he's actually talking about Lucifer mm -hmm. or, or Satan or the devil. We know that he's, he's given a description of him because he says he was perfect in all of your ways in the days that you were created mm -hmm. until iniquity was found in uh -huh. you. Yeah. Iniquity, that iniquity has been identified in mm -hmm. Isaiah around the 13th chapter where he says that uh, you said in your heart, I will Come ascend. On. On. So iniquity is the thoughts. Right. The thoughts. When you express those thoughts, mm -hmm. when it's been conceived and now you're expressing it when you're doing it, that's when iniquity becomes sin. Mm -hmm. All right, so so he says iniquity. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that's in your heart. heart. Yeah. Rejoiceth not in the thoughts, but rejoiceth in the truth. Mm -hmm. Love bears all things. Mm -hmm. Believes all things, yeah. hopes all things, mm -hmm. endures all things. How many folks have gotten on your nerve and you just had to walk away from them? I ain't got nothing else to do with you. That's it. That's all. Yeah, I'm not talking about somebody who's toxic or abusive. Because some people you got to just endure from a distance. <laughs> So you don't get back up to the other one, you know, start laying hands, yeah. throwing hands. Because some of y'all look like you still got hands. I'm not going to even look on this side because I already know y'all got hands over here. <laughs> yeah, I know who to call. So anyway, I'm no trouble. I know who to call. All right. Uh, but it says uh, it, it's going to endure all things. See, on this side, they got hands. On this side, they got Smith and Wesson. You know, so they're going to touch them from a distance. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, I show up with Jubilee. I'm somebody having trouble. Which one Which one it is, Pastor? No, this, this group right here? Okay, you and, you and First Lady, you all going home. We got this. We got, I'm going to need you later to raise them up, but I just want them to understand the process of what pain and dying feels like. So next time they'll think about it. All right? But love, it, it never fails. The prophecies, they're going to they're gonna fail or they're going to end. They're going to cease. Whether they're tongues, they're also going to cease. Whether there's knowledge, it's going to vanish away. But we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, that which is in part is going to be done away with. When I was a child, I... Talked like a child. Uh -huh. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away those childish uh -oh. things. That goes right back to, and you can just write this down. We might go back here. Uh, go, go back, write down uh, Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. So when I, when I read this, when I read this, and I thought that this was God's command for me, uh -huh. this was his command for me, um, to, to, to treat humanity 
And then I had the revelation in uh, Galatia, in, in, uh, in uh, Genesis, the first chapter, when he says, let's make man in our image. He's talking about the image of, of the Father, the image of the Word, and the image uh -huh. and likeness, the character, even of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. and, and so he, God is saying that my nature, my nature, my character mm -hmm. is right here. Yes. Verses 4 through 8. And so you've made me in this. You've given me the ability to do everything that's written here. Uh -huh. You love me. Uh -huh. Jeremiah, uh, he says that I've loved you with a righteous love from mm -hmm. everlasting to everlasting. He's mm -hmm. always loved you. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. Yeah. Always loved. There's absolutely no thing you can do uh -huh. that's going to make him stop loving you. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. One of the things here we see in 5, it says... That uh, it's not uh, what some translations is going to say that it bears no record of wrongdoing. Uh -huh. Meaning that when I repent, when I when I am forgiven, he doesn't remember anything uh -huh. that I ever did. Uh -huh. Everything that happened before the cross, we talk about it like it's a testimony. Everything that happened before we got saved is, is no longer a part of who we are. Right. So why don't we talk about that? Right. What's the Lord done for you lately? God loves you. God loves you. This is the way he loves you. Do you really believe that? Amen. No, do you really believe that he loves you? Amen. Do you really believe that he thinks only good of you? Yeah. Do you really believe that he is already forgiven and he doesn't bring anything up? Amen. Do you really believe that he that he has never given a prophet a word to talk about your past that he's already forgotten about? Amen. And see, when I, once I've repented, Amen. once I've repented, and I'm even talking about the things, not just before I got saved, but even the stuff I've done since I've been born again, uh -huh. once I've repented, he doesn't remember, so he's not going to send somebody or call me up in some prayer line to talk about all the stuff that I did wrong that I got forgiven for. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. That's the word that you can just say, listen, I don't receive that. That's not from God. Right. Mm -hmm. You got that from somebody running their mouth or from the devil, but, yeah, but you didn't get it from God. And because it didn't come from God, it's not going to be attached to me. Right. Paul says something like this when they were talking about him. Oh, you're the one who was killing and doing this. And then Paul's testimony was the things that he used to do before Christ. But when they start talk, coming at him like this, he said, I've wronged no man. Come on now. I've wronged no man. I'm not getting ready to allow you to reattach what I've been forgiven for right, right, back right. to me. Amen. That's not going to be a burden for me. That was something that That's Jesus good. already took care of, yeah, right. and I'm not going to allow you to yeah. put it back in my life, put it in my path. Yeah, right. So there's some conversations we just don't have. God loves me. Yeah. 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 It's easy to believe God's love as a child. Because ain't nothing really happening. We got childlike faith. You know, we're, I'm believing God for this, and it happens. And I'm believing God for that, and it happens. I'm believing God for this, and it don't happen. Right. Because right. now I'm, I'm progressing. I'm moving forward. You're moving forward in your faith. And we're, 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 we're going to, there's some words that's just going to start intertwining or inter, they're going to become one. When you start talking about the word of love or the word of faith, the word of faith is actually the word of God. The word of God, what is the word of God? Come on, man. All right, okay. So sometimes it's challenging to believe God as an adult. Sometimes, sometimes it's challenging. Anybody have a challenge ever believing God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sing the song, I believe God, his word is true. I believe God, what he said he will do. Uh -huh. You know, so we sing the songs, but then when it comes down to it, do we really believe? Do we really believe? Do we really believe? Uh, the, the prophet told, he told Ahab, he told King Ahab, he said, listen, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. <laughs> so you need to get off this mountain and get down to Jezreel because before you get stuck in the mud because there is a storm Come on. out. Come on. Yeah. 
Oh, over the ocean. Come on, everybody. Who am I talking to? Anybody know that song? There's a storm out over the ocean. And it's blowing. Come on. If your soul's not ain't in Jesus, it will surely. Okay, come on. Come on. All right, all right. I got some Baptist folk. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. So there's a there's a storm. There's a cloud just the size of a man's head. Now, when we see a cloud, most of us are going to be. We're going to still pray it in. All right, Lord, we need that cloud to get more where it needs to grow. Oh, God, did you know? He's yeah. saying, I've already answered you. Yeah. And so we've got to be bold enough yeah. in our prayer. Yeah. Even in our prayer, when we're praying for people, yeah. we've got to be bold enough uh -huh. to believe God and put your faith to work. Yeah. Right. Putting your faith to work doesn't just mean something that you're going to have to do. That means that you're going to speak it. Yeah. You're going to declare it. And when you got confidence, God is going to manifest it. Yeah. It's going to happen. And then you don't even have to worry how you're going to have, going to get there. Because the scripture says that the king and his chariot took off according to the man of God's word. Yeah. But the, when he got to the when he got to the city, the man of God was sitting there wringing out his robe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> how did he get there? He ran past him. The Lord is getting ready to begin to move things, and you don't even see it happen. He's getting ready to start manifesting things, not, not according to my declaration, not even according to what's been written, but according to your word. According to your word. See, it's, see, see when, you, when you consider all of the experiences of your life, it's hard to believe God. Yeah. When you consider the things that religion has taught us, it's hard to believe God. But do you really believe that his love for you is true? Yeah. Do you really believe that everything he said, he's going to do for you? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm going to retract that. He's not going to do nothing. Oh, it's because it's already done. All, right. All we have to do is now qualify and move into mature and then receive access, yeah. access yeah. to everything. Yeah. Because everything already belongs to you. Oh, yeah. it's, it's really important that you get this because when you get this, it's gonna change the way you see life. Yeah. It's gonna change the way that you speak yeah. life. It's going to change yeah. the things that you say, yeah. even in your house. Yeah. You can't be moved by what was. Right. Yeah. Be moved yeah. by what is. Yeah. And what is, is that the word of God yeah. is waiting to go to work, but you got to work the yeah. word of God. Yeah. Yeah. You got to work the word of God. You just got to speak the word. Yeah. You got to declare the word. Yeah. I was in Sam's Club the other day and didn't even remember what I was there for. And, and somebody came over. I was, I was just inviting somebody new to the area to Jubilee. And uh, and uh, and somebody came over. One of the managers came over and said, you know, he's the owner of Sam's Club. <laughs> so this is what they've been taught. So the folks think that I that they really believe that I own Sam's Club. <laughs> and, and because they believe that I own Sam's Club, when I needed to talk to somebody, I just went on up the stairs. They're counting money. They're counting money. I went into the room, and there's cameras going, and, and, and nobody ever challenges me. Uh -huh. <laughs> nobody ever challenged me. Because yeah, they really believe that I own Sam's Club. I go into the back, and I'm asking for stuff. My wife needed something that they require everybody to order, and you got to wait about a week. But I go back there, and I said, yeah, my wife needs this. Okay, well, let's go see if it's there. And they go into the freezer, and they get the stuff that everybody else is waiting for. They got to wait. They got to wait. They got to wait. And, and so now I'm talking. When I start talking, you know, people will gather around. And so just the other day, I'm, I'm back there. And the woman who said he's the owner of Sam's Club to somebody else, I see her talking to the uh, the lead cashier. They got him on the floor, you know, watching everything, you know, all the, you know. And so I go over there, and I said something to her, and I said, I need to borrow your hands, woman of God, because I need to put your hands on her heart and on this woman's. And she said, don't play with me. I said, listen, I got oil. She said, baby, I got oil in my car. What you need? Uh, and I said, you know what? You go ahead and put your hands on her, and I'm going to stand behind her. And now this woman, she says, you know, you know, man, I'll do it. 
<laughs> I said, I would have asked you to before I didn't think you would. But she's still talking about what she's going to do. So I said, okay, let me, I got this. And so I put my arm around her shoulder, and I just start speaking into her life. Uh -huh. And I'm holding her up because yeah. she's swaying, right, uh -huh. and she's crying. And she says, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, okay, okay. And then I was finished. Uh -huh. Just said everything that I was that was, that was was there. Uh -huh. And then she's, she's walking away so she can go and clean up. And then the woman, the other woman said, are, are you an apostle or prophet or something? Yeah, I said, yeah, some, something like that. <laughs> and then, so now she wanted to have a conversation of speaking to her life, and then she gets called, uh -huh. and I had to go. But I'm saying that this always works. And yes. You're always on. Yeah. When you yeah. when you think that you're lost, you are always on. Yeah. We got Stay lost ready. in uh, we got lost in Central America. We got lost because uh -huh. I told I told our driver this is a tire that you're gonna need to change, and he didn't change it. Uh -huh. He says, "Oh, it's gonna be okay." I said, "No, we're leaving. We're leaving." Uh, Kapan, and I got a meeting with pastors in Guatemala City, and uh, Apostle Miles was with me. Uh -huh. And you know, he, he would get all you know emotional and all. He say, "No, Jay, they need to change that tire." And I said, "Yeah, I know." But uh, what ended up happening was the people we was following knew where we was going. Everybody in my car uh -huh. didn't even know where we was. <laughs> Wasn't no GPS. We're in, you know, and so and, and so the the tire blew, and the the car in front of us, who was leading us, kept going. Now, these guys, they're changing the tire, and now we're lost. We don't even know how to get out of this city to get into, we, we're just, and so we're riding around in circles for over an hour. Uh -huh. I saw a hotel, and I said, you know what? Go ahead and take me over here, uh -huh. and I'm going to stay here tonight, uh -huh. and when you all figure things out. And, uh, and then we passed by a McDonald's, and I said, okay, well, now I want some fries. <laughs> <laughs> now I want, it was a Monday night, and I, you know, uh -huh. so I want some fries. And so we go into McDonald's, and uh, and the only thing I knew how to say was Papa's fritas. <laughs> you know, so that's what I had. And so just I want some fries. And so we get them, and Dale got his order, and we're walking, and we and I'm just looking. It says, "Got to be a reason why we're here." And we go and sit down. This is for somebody who hadn't heard this. Uh -huh. And uh, so we sit down, and I look over to these men at a table. And Dale just looked at me and said, Jay, I just want to eat. We're going to do this right here? and Because he saw the look. Uh -huh. And I said, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so so through our interpreter, he asked, I, I told him, just ask the man how he's doing. And the man said, he said, uh, the Lord told him that two angels were coming from America wow. to heal him. He had cancer. He had tumors on his stomach. And I said, okay, well, the Lord is going to heal you right now. Praise and I God. said, stand up. So he stood up. Now, the lobby is full. I don't <laughs> care. And so, and so he stood up, and Dale said, all right. So he stood behind him. Uh -huh. And the man lifted his shirt, and I put my hand on this growth. Thank and as I was touching him, it disappeared. The man is on the ground. He's on the floor. And now, now the, the, the thing is, is that everybody's rejoicing. Right. So what we thought was just going to be a meal, it turned uh -huh. into a happy meal right. for somebody. Right. 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 Yeah. And then all of the complaining that we was doing in the car. Yes. That's, my, that's my point. Yes. We were separated from the leader. Yes. They forgot about us and kept going. See, they didn't know how to caravan. Yes. Yeah. See, when Pleasant Hill would be going to First Thessalonians in Stockton, everybody caravan. If you right. got caught by a light, everybody pulled over and waited right. for you to come right. through. Right. That's, I mean, that's the way I was taught. Yeah, just observing, that's the way I was taught. So I'm looking. I'm always looking. If somebody's following me, I'm always looking to make sure that they're there. When I don't see them, I'll pull over, right. put my flashes on so I can stand out. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that. Well, we found out was that it wasn't about us. Right. It was about this word that somebody received yeah. Yeah. about these two right. men who were coming from America right. to heal him. Yeah. So he was, yeah. the Lord had to get us in McDonald's. Yeah. I didn't even have an appetite. I didn't even care. You ever have too much of an attitude to be hungry? Right. Yeah. 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 I had too much of an attitude uh -huh. to want some french fries, right. but then I had a strong desire for french fries, right. and there was McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. It was always about somebody else. Sometimes the Lord will position you. That's right. So, yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. My God. Yeah, 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 yeah. First John, first John chapter four. I'm, I'm not going to be able to get through all of this because I want to get to six things that's going to let you know whether or not you're really walking in love. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. First John, first John chapter uh, four, verses seven through ten. It says, dear friends. Now, this is this is just going to explain the depth of God's love for you. He says, dear friends, let us continue to love one another. For love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending uh, his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is the real love. Not, the, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. See, God's love for you and every person in this place. I'm just talking to you. God's love for you and every person in this place is the reason why he sacrificed his son for mankind. His love for you is the reason why he sacrificed his only begotten son. That his son became the lamb so he can sacrifice. And it was it was up to the head of the household to to uh, to uh, to get the lamb, tie the lamb, prepare the lamb, and sacrifice the lamb. So the, the head of the household had to bruise the lamb. The head of the household had to had to tie him up. The head of the household had to do all those things that God did, and He said that it pleased Him mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So He sent His Son as a sacrifice for mankind, and and He sent the Holy Spirit as a gift to the body of Christ mm -hmm. because we needed more proof. You need more proof? Oh. Yeah, just write this down. 1 John 4, mm -hmm. 13 through 16. God gave us his son. Mm -hmm. God gave us his son. But God, gave, God has given unto us his spirit, his spirit mm -hmm. as proof that we live in him and he in us. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I'm reading it to you. Uh, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the father sent his son to be the savior of the world, uh, all who declare that Jesus is the son of God have uh, got God living in them. And they live in God. We know how much God loves us because we're going to put our trust in him. You can, you can never go away from God's love. You can never go away from God's love no matter what you've done in, the, in life. His love is always with you. Hallelujah. However, greatly, greatly, Hallelujah. you know, the way that we see this, the way that we love, the way that we move forward can hinder his love from manifesting things in our lives. Come on now. I'm going to give you a couple of things. Let me see how much I can get through in 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Um, uh, this is going to be much like that heart series when I gave you 10 things that identify you got heart trouble and then how to fix your heart. All right, number one, you know that you're not walking in love when you blame God during your challenges. You blame God during your challenges. It's easy to profess that, that God loves you and everything's going well, but uh, then we say things to God, why did you let this happen? Why did you let this happen? Jesus said that uh, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And he's made us overcomers. In James, in James uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through, uh, through 5, uh, through 8, rather, he tells us about the trying of our faith. He says to count it all joy and know that the trying of your faith, the challenges in your life, it's going to develop you. It's going to yes. develop your faith. It's going to develop your your uh, your uh, uh, even your ability to think and decide. Uh -huh. James, he talks about being double-minded. Double-minded means two loyalties. Okay, that's right. I'm loyal, or I'm going to be constant or consistent. I'm going to be loyal to this one and that one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be loyal to two. I'm going to act like I love them both. Come on, Pastor. Double-minded. Mm -hmm. 
And if you're going to be loyal to the world and try to be loyal to this word, you're going to be, you know, unstable in all of your ways. <laughs> unstable in all your ways. And he says that kind of a person has no right to expect anything from God. Make up your mind. Anybody ever blame God? Well, nobody raising their hand. I blame God. I have. I have. You know, God is not moved because you blame him. I said nothing is going to make him stop loving you. But you'll stop reaping the benefits of that love. You've had children who said to their parents, I hate you. Some people have even said that to God. Now, I ain't been that mad at him. I ain't been, you know, I never said I hate you. I never said that. Even though he's not moved by that because he understands. He already knows what's in your heart. Because he's right there. All right. When you blame your failures on, on your humanity. When you blame your failures on self, I'm only human. No, you're not only human. Right, that's the truth. You're not only human. We talk about Jesus being both God and man. Right. Theophany. You familiar with that? We say that he's both God and man. But don't you understand that so are you? Yes. You are God and man. Uh -huh. You are made in the image and given the spirit. So that you are both God and you are human. You are you have been hewed out of the earth. Yes. What you see, the flesh and blood, simply gives the real you yes. legal authority to operate in this realm. That's right. That's right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Legal authority. Right. So it's not that you're not just human. You're not just human. Uh, you're more than that. Ephesians 2 says that you're God's masterpiece. Ephesians 2.10. It says he calls you a masterpiece. Yes. Created anew. You are a new creation. That's part of our, our foundation yes. uh, scripture in uh, Corinthians 5.17. 1 Corinthians 5.17. You're, you're, you're a new creation. Mm -hmm. You're a new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been created and, uh, and, and walking in a new, you've got a purpose. You've got purpose. Mm -hmm. That's at first, that's second. Corinthians 5.17. Second Corinthians 5.17. All right. Uh, just before his death, uh, in, uh, in John 17, Jesus prayed, Lord, make them one. He prayed for us. Mm -hmm. Make them one. Even as you and I are one, even as we are one, make them one with us. You're more than just human. You're more than just human. You are, he says in, uh, in, the, in the book of Psalm, in the Psalm, he says, I'm going to, you are gods. I've told you before that you are gods. The Lord said to Moses, uh, dealing with Pharaoh, he said, I've made you a god to Pharaoh and Aaron is going to be your prophet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to you in this world, we're looking at the world, and he says, don't be in love with the world. That's a loyalty. He says, be in love with God. That's yeah. a loyalty. Right. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for everything that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Yeah. So he's telling us, don't be in love with that. Don't be in love with what you see, yeah. the things that the world has to offer. Don't be loyal to that. If somebody talks about how they can prosper you and I'm going to make you rich and I'm going to do this for you and I'm going to do that. He says, don't be loyal to that. Be loyal to the word who says you already rich. How are you going to make me what I already am? That got Eve in trouble. You're going to be like God if you do this. I'm already like God, made in his image, given his likeness. I got his abilities. What are you talking about? Why are you talking anyway? <laughs> huh. All right. Number one, when you blame God during challenges. Number two, when you blame your failures on your humanity. I'm only human. I'm only human. That don't work. It don't work because you're not only human. You are both man and God. Number three, when you live in fear. When you live in fear. Love never fails. We just read that. Think about God's love for you and his provisions for you. Uh -huh. You can't be double-minded. We just talked about that. Uh -huh. 
and think that you're going to get everything. You still have everything, but that just means that you're not mature enough to access it. Amen. See what God said and believe that. Amen. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Perfect love is going to cast out fear anyway. Uh -huh. there's, no, there's no love perfect other than the love of God. Yes. Yes. So God's love is going to cast out fear. Mm -hmm. God's love is going to do so many things for you that we don't even have time to talk about. It. Mm -hmm. Number four, when you deny your right. I think this is where I'm probably going to stop. When you deny your right. See, you know Jesus is Savior, but have you considered that he's also your advocate? Right. Right. He's also your advocate. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever need an attorney? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right now. Right now? Never <laughs> Yep, yeah, but you, you have an advocate as well. He's not just your savior, he's an advocate. Yes. First John tells us that when we fall short, when we fall short, that and we know that everybody falls short. Yes. What Romans says, we've all come short. We all fall short. Yes. All right, uh, but we have an advocate with the Father. Yes. Our advocate, Jesus, uh -huh. the Word who was God became man. Yes. Our advocate, Jesus, who was the Word from the beginning, our beginning, yes. who was God and he was with God, mm -hmm. made everything that was made. Mm -hmm. In our advocate, the yes. Word. Now remember, you were made in the image and given the nature of the Word. Yes. <laughs> you have the nature of the word we looked at the nature of God which is love and we're looking at the nature of the word which is everything the word created everything the word framed the world that you live in yeah 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 in uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 3 it says that by the, the by the word of God the world was framed the worlds were framed by his word. So then by your words, by your words, Jesus says you are justified and condemned. Uh -huh. By your words, he says you're going to have everything that you say. What he's saying is that your words are going to frame the world you yeah. live in. Yeah. Your world is going to be determined by your words. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak, Jesus says yeah. in Matthew 12. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Now, everything that is in your heart, then, is going to be in your life. It's yeah. going to manifest. Yeah. So if you're not thinking the right things or putting the right things in your heart, yeah. you got to start changing. you got to change your diet. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to put more of the word in you. Put the yeah. word in you, and the word is going to come out. Yeah. Now, are you saying that doing these things or listening to this music or watching this on television or going to these movies, is that's wrong? Uh, for me, is it a sin? Well, listen, everybody's got their own thing. Right. All right. That, but this is this is the thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want this to manifest in your life yes. and and, uh, and it's not manifesting, come on, come the on. stuff that you are watching and listening to yes. is the stuff that's manifesting. Mm -hmm. Then just simple. Change the stuff you're watching and listening to. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Start yeah. watching the word, listening yeah. to the word, yeah. Yeah. listening to worship. Yeah. You know, listening to change your music, change yeah. your environment, yeah. and you're going to change your world yeah. because you're going to change the things that you speak. Yeah. You're going to start seeing yourself. When I go to a model home, I, yeah. when it's the right one, yeah. I can see myself in that house. Yeah. When I'm looking for a car, yeah. I'm going to test drive the car, and I might yeah. look back at it, and when I can see myself yeah. in that car, yeah. then I know that's the one that's going to yeah. manifest yeah. in my life. That's the one I can see it in my garage. I can see myself filling it with gas. I can see myself in that car. I can see my family in that car. I can see my family in the house. But you got to see it. If you can see it, you can have it. You got to see it. You got to see it. You got to see, see it. So our advocate, the word, who was, who was God and, uh, and became man. God became man. Jesus, the son of David, born of people of praise, born from the tribe of Judah. The son of David was born from the tribe of Judah. The lion from the tribe of Judah yeah. became the lamb of God that was going to be sacrificed. But before the blood was shed, he had to shed it himself. He had to shed it himself. Then there's a medical term. Uh, there's a medical term. Let me see. I wrote it down. And, and let's see if I still have it here. Uh, it is called uh, uh, hemat hematidrosis. Hemat 
tedrosis, hematidrosis. That's, uh, that's when uh, even anxiety and stress could cause your, uh, your, your capillaries or your blood and your, and your sweat to become one, and you're going to be sweating blood. But you've got to be under enough stress. Now, in the, the book of Luke, I think it's Luke 22, he talks about that. He says that, that sweats, the drops of blood like sweat mm -hmm. ran down when Jesus was going through this garden experience. Mm -hmm. See, a garden experience in your life isn't where you're going to pick fruit. Right. A garden experience, much like the, the wilderness, is going to be where you got to make a decision mm -hmm. that's yeah. going to wear you down, wear you out. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, Ephesians uh, chapter 1 uh, God calls him the beloved son of God. So he's he's the he's the beloved. And John he calls uh, John calls him the beloved. John calls him the beloved. God calls him my beloved. And uh, John uh, uh, identifies the beloved as our advocate. So our advocate, your advocate, the person who's willing to speak for you, who's ready to speak for you, is not going to fight you for the floor. Uh -huh. So if you're talking, he's going to be quiet. We have the nature of the word, but when it comes to the cross, the cross transforms us into the image of the sun. That's it. All right, that was good for me. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you this, and I'm going to stop talking. You have the okay that you want me to tell you. Okay, you want me to stop talking. Okay, tell you. All right. You have the right to an attorney. Uh huh. Praise God. While you remain silent in your own defense. Come on. You have a right to an attorney. Uh huh. When you defend yourself, your attorney remains silent. Uh -huh. Both of you cannot talk That's at right. the same time. Right. Come on. Daniel talked about being in the court of heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in the court of heaven, he heard the advocate who is the son mm -hmm. talking for you. Mm -hmm. When you decide that you want to defend yourself, your attorney, your advocate will be silent. Mm -hmm. So you have the right to remain silent in your own defense. Yeah, oh, the right. only thing that's going to be coming out of your mouth is praise. Mm -hmm. Because praise or Judah is going to produce or manifest the lion from the tribe mm -hmm. of Judah. That son of David, the righteous son of God. That son of David who is the word of God who became the righteous son of God. Who went to the cross just for you and he shed his blood. He had to shed his own blood before yeah. blood was going to be shed. And what I got this morning when I was looking at this, I just said, oh, my God. I said, oh, my God, wait, I got to go back and revisit the story. Because when I get to the story, I find out that the lamb was already dead when he was stabbed by man. Come on. So the blood, the blood was already shed in the yeah. garden when he was when he was making a decision, yeah. when he saw you, when he had you on his mind, when he knew this very moment in your life was going to be was going to manifest. He knew that you was going to come to this place of decision. He knew that you was going to be under all this pressure. He knew that you was going to be at a place where your faith is going to be challenged. And now you and you're going to be challenged to come go to the bank knowing your credit is jacked up. And you're going to say now you're going to get to the place where I'm not here to spend any money. I'm here to use my favor. I got favor with God. And I found out that faith is the currency that makes purchases here on this earth. It's the currency of heaven that's going to make pur uh, purchases here. Yes. So I got faith in God. I got faith in God. Yeah, I've messed up. I've repented. And now here I am, Lord, because you told me to go to Walmart in the middle of the day. Because you told me to go to Wells Fargo. Or where, wherever he told you to go, you need to go there. Because he told you to go looking at model homes. When I looked at the house that we're in, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the builder, the representative for the builder even looked at me and my wife and said, some people come into this community know that they don't belong here. Wow. I said, yes, yeah, some people probably do. Right. 
But that ain't me. Right. right. Now we're having this conversation. We're filling out some paperwork. I don't care what my credit says. Right. right. I don't care what any bank says. Right. I came here with money already. How are you going to pay for it? I'm going to write a check. Right. Yeah. I said, I've been pre approved by the bank. She didn't need to know it was the Bank of Heaven. <laughs> I've been pre approved by the bank. My faith has brought me here because the Lord said to come here. Yeah. Well, that's more than enough house. Well, that's the way my God is. He's going to give you more than enough. And I'm telling you right now today, because you've decided that you're going to operate in love, that you're going to walk in love, that the God of more than enough, that's his nature. That's his nature. And he says that I've made you and given you my nature. So the God of more than enough has transferred his nature to you. So there's things that you've been looking at. And the Lord is saying, that's not enough. Yeah. There's a car you've been looking at, and the Lord is saying, that's not enough. Yeah. The Lord, there's a house you've been looking at, and the Lord is saying, that's not enough. There's property that you've been looking at, and the Lord is saying, that's not enough. There's something that you've been, you've been looking at a job, and you've been looking at how much it's going to pay, and the Lord is saying, that's not enough. I'm telling you that the God of more than enough, when you decide I'm going to walk in love, that I'm going to walk in your character, that I'm going to move forward in my faith, that I'm going to change the things that I'm saying, I'm going to change the things that I'm seeing, I'm going to change the things that I've been doing, and now I'm going to walk out in a boldness, expression of my faith in you, and I'm going to declare the things that you declare. I don't have to come into agreement with the world, and you don't even have to come into agreement because we've taken the scripture that says that where two or three agree that God is going to do these things, and Jesus says that when you're touching it in agreement, that I'm going to be in the midst and I'm going to manifest the thing, but if you can't find nobody in your life who understands your testimony, if you can't find another human on this earth who's going to come into agreement with you, then remember that you've been made in the image of the Father. That's one person. You've been made in the image of the Word and the Son. That's another person. And you've been made in the image of the Holy Ghost. So the only person you need to come into agreement is with yourself. You come into agreement with yourself. And with yourself, you come into agreement with the Word. And you begin to declare the things that God has already declared. You begin to lay hands on stuff in your house. Lay hands on your spouse. Lay hands on your pillow. And if your pillow next to you is empty because you ain't got a spouse, then you lay hands on that pillow. And you, you begin to declare the man that's supposed to be laying next to you as your husband. You, you begin to declare the woman who's going to be laying next to you as your wife. You begin to declare the things that God has already declared. You said it's not good for me to be by myself. You said it's not good for me to be all one, which means that I am all one in the image of the Father, in the image of the Son, in the image of the Holy Ghost. I am all one, so the three of you have manifested in me, and because of all of the names that they call you, they call you these names, 3,000 names, because of your nature. Your nature is to heal, so they call you healer. Your nature is to deliver, so they call you deliverer. Your nature is a sanctifier, so they call you sanctifier. Your nature is righteousness, so they call you righteousness. Everything that he is, I'm telling you right now, is who you are. And in order for you to walk in that, all you got to do is walk in what he is, and that's love. You start walking in love, and you're going to start seeing these things manifest. When you start walking in love, and you stop blaming uh, God, you stop challenging God because you don't understand. He didn't ask you to understand him. He said, just trust me. But in all of my getting, I'm supposed to get an understanding. No, not when it comes to him. <laughs> Never will you find a scripture where he tells you to understand, then obey. He tells you to obey. Understanding will always follow obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You obey me, do the things that I said. And right now, it's not about you laying hands on the sick. Right now, it's not about you raising the dead, giving sight to the blind. Right now, it's not even about you going to a place to pay for somebody's groceries or somebody's meal. Right now, it's about you making the decision that from right now, I'm going to walk in love. I'm not just going to walk in love. I'm going to be like you, God, and I'm going to become love because you are love. I got to be love. People got to know that I'm love. They will know that you're love because you're loving. Yeah.
They're going to know that you're loved because of the things that you say, because of the way that you respond. Every one of your responses is going to be a response in love. You're going to speak love. You're going to speak love. And you're going to find out that love, even like faith, Paul said this word of faith which we preach is going to be a word of love which you preach. And the message, the gospel message, the good news of your message is not going to even be the words that you speak, but the life that you're living. Yes, God. My God. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love with Jesus. So when you can look at somebody, and you're going to start making people feel uncomfortable. I'm telling you, this kind of love will make somebody, it'll make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I does. can look you in the eyes, Tiffany, and say, Tiffany, I love you. Mm -hmm. I can look you right in the eye. I'm not going to look away. <laughs> I'm not going to say, no, it's not going to be, girl, you know I love you. Or, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look you in the eyes, and I'm going to say, Tiffany, I love you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to look you in the eyes, and I'm going to say, I love you. Yeah. Tony, man, I love you. Yeah, yeah, I love you, yeah. man. I love you. God. Sharon, I love you. I love you too. Rosie, I love you. I don't know if your name is Rosie or Rose, but I've been calling you Rosie for 41 years. It probably ain't going to change now. Your name Rosie or Rose? Rose? Well, you Rosie to me, so when you hear Rosie, you know who's calling. Are you sure? I don't even know anymore. But you're going to look people in the eyes. How many of you have been transformed today? Yeah. You know what? I'm not. You know what? I'm gonna go even further. You are. When you start doing this, you won't be the image of love. You're not gonna be transformed into the image of love. You're gonna be transformed into love. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got it back today. Because you're made in the image of God. He made you to look like him. Yes. 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 Why the devil hates you so yes. much because yes. every time he sees yes. you, he only sees God. Yes. Yes. And he wants to challenge you so much because he always sees God. He can't stop you because he doesn't have that kind of power. Yes. He doesn't have the power to stop you. That's why all the distractions come. You get so far over here that you don't you forget about where you've been over there. You got to get back to this place. Yeah, right. I got to get back. Yeah, yeah. Lord. I got to get back to this foundation of love. Yeah, yeah. I got to get back to this. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because yeah. this is where I'm going to find everything that I need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. I'm going to change that too. Thank yeah. you, Father. Everything that I need is going to find me. Right. Yeah. 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 Everything that I need is going to find me. Yeah. He's saying that I've commanded these blessings. I don't know who this one is for. Maybe it's for you. He said, I've commanded these blessings to come upon you and to overtake you. Yeah. And the blessings have been looking for you, but you've been out of position. And he's saying, Stand, stay in position. And they're going to come upon you. The thing about the blessings is that he'll send them to an intersection, but if you're not there where you're supposed to be, somebody else is going to get it. Elisha was told by Elijah, uh -huh. if you're with me when I'm taken, uh -huh. if you see me when I'm taken, uh -huh. see the mantle is going to fall. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's going to be other prophets who are going to be standing on the other side, yeah. people who are going to be around. They're yeah. going to see what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. And as long as you're there, if you're there, you'll be able to pick it up and you'll have your prayer. Your prayer is going to be answered. Yeah. But if you're not there, somebody else is going to come and get it. And they're going to be moving in what was meant for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Father. My God. Thank you, Father. Somebody say, I'm not going to lose another blessing. I'm not, not going to lose another blessing. blessing. I'm not going to lose another one. Yeah. Remember, more than enough. Yeah. It was never God's intention for you who has everything to be broke. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to access everything, he had to break you. Some of you are being broken, but not broke. Actually, when I said that, it was a setup. You're being broken right now, but you're not broke. 
You can't be broke and see yourself as broke. You can't be moved anymore by those numbers. I mean, balance your checkbook. I mean, yeah. but you can't be moved by those things that you see. When it's not consistent with what you see. Jesus said you can't have two masters. You can't be loyal to both of them. That's double-minded. That's un instability. Anybody been unstable? I've been unstable in my life. I'm telling you, I've been unstable. If you're unstable right now, if you're in that place right now, go ahead and raise your hand up. Lift your hand up. Online, if you're unstable right now, go ahead and lift your hand up. Father, for every hand lifted in this place and online, I set my faith in agreement with your word concerning them. They're raising their hands to say that this is where I am, but this is not. We can see. I speak vision right now beyond this moment. I speak vision, a renewed vision, a new vision, restored hope. Restored hope. You've called them more than enough. You've declared that they are the healing. They are healed. The healed. You are healed. You have never made a mistake in your life. Your sins, everything's been forgiven. God's blessings are looking for you right now. You're going to even find them overwhelming. Where you're going to have to ask God to stop blessing you for the moment. You can't see that ever happening, but I'm telling you, it's happening for somebody right now. It's happening for you right now. I speak faith. I speak hope. I speak strength. I speak joy. I declare that there is peace in your house. Yes. I declare shalom yes. over you right now. Yes. And your house, there is nothing missing. There is no thing broken. There is no thing lacking in your life, in your world. From this moment forward. Because you're only going to see what God sees. You're going to see everything that he's seen, and it will manifest for you. I declare this in the authority and reputation of Jesus. Come on, if you receive that, just go ahead.
Somebody told you it was because of evil and God is saying, no, baby, that's your gymnasium of faith. There was some weight that the devil did, couldn't, didn't have the power to lift and put on your shoulders. Anybody been trying to get some weights off your shoulders? God is saying, I've been strengthening you. You said to strengthen me. I've been strengthening you. And right now, I'm telling you that you've always had a spotter to help you push that off. As you say, I've gotten some weights off of me, and now it's just more. It seems like the weights are heavier. Who am I talking to right now? The weight is heavier. And what God is saying that I've been putting the weight on you to make you stronger. I declare a strength in you right now to manifest right now like you have never seen before. The strength right now that's manifesting in you is greater than the natural strength of Samson. You are strength. You are peace. I just got to pop you in the forehead. I got to pop you in the forehead. Crazy, Lord. You don't even got to get up. I just got to pop, pop you in the forehead. I got to slap somebody's hand right now. There's a, there's going to be a, there's going to be a release. There's going to be a release. There's going to be a release. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. This is the day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. I need to borrow a share. Let me, let me borrow your hand. Hallelujah. Just put it right there on the heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just stand real close to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Because this is a spear. It's like a spear that's that's going through the heart. And it's from heart to heart. For, for the shame, for every foul word that's ever been spoken, and it's taken Glory! The blood, even the blood that Jesus shed in the garden. Jesus didn't shed his blood on the cross, he shed his blood in the garden because he was thinking about you. The Lord said to Cain that the blood of your brother is crying out from the ground. The blood of Jesus that he shed in the garden concerning you has been crying out for you. This is the day that shame is lifted from your house. You're going to see yourself. Your thought, your vision, what you hear. I cancel out everything that's not consistent with the Word of God. I cancel them. There's been some stuff lingering in your house that's not consistent with what the Lord has promised you. It dies today. Every word. As a prophet of God, I pluck it up. I cast it down. 
tear it up from the root. I destroy it. And now I plant and I build. He's saying I'm doing a new thing in you. And everybody's going to see the glory on your house. You have not been forgotten. Uh, you know what? Put your hand on her belly right here. There you go. For the words to flow. It's been dwelling in you richly. It's about to be released. It's about to be released. He's saying, I've done this. I've kept you here. I've kept you in this place. And all his love for you is great. His love for you is great. His love for you is great. He brought you here. Not just to this place. Sacramento. You left for a while, right? Okay. He brought you, he's the one who brought you back. It wasn't just for your mom. It wasn't just for your family. It was for you. There's things that you saw. There's things that you heard. There's things that you experienced. Brought you here to this very moment. So this is for you. Yeah, this is for you. Your hands. Because you love God. You love the Lord. Don't you love him? How much you love him? And he knows that. You know that there's got to be more. You feel like that to your life. There's got to be more to your life. He's got more for you. It begins today. This is how anointed your hands are. This is the way they used to bury people. They used to bury people and they still baptize people that way. They cross their, their hands on top of their heart. They're burying, but this is symbolic of a death. Because today is the day. What's your name? Brittany. What's your full name? Brittany Sampson. This is the day that Brittany Sampson died. To Brittany Sampson. This is the day that she died to you. This is the day that you live. Yeah. This is the day that you live. You know what? Speak a word to her from right where you sit. Just declare a word. Just speak. Speak. To Brittany Sam. The Lord will empower you. Brittany Sam. To prosper. To go forth and elevate. From this level to the next. To one rim to the next. And you will continue to elevate from this day forward. You will see your elevation. You will see your prosperity. Yeah. You will see your resurrection. Yeah. This we declare. Because we know. Yeah. 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 All right. So to our to our Facebook and YouTube audience, our online audience, we bless you in the name of the Lord and know that you know what? This isn't for show or for form or fashion. <laughs> This is this was for you. Every word, uh, listen, every word that was spoken to anybody who's in this place, know that this is for you as well. Anything that you come into agreement with, it's for you. And right now, I just want you to experience or start talking about the love of God. And, but I want you to experience his love. So if you're here today, if you're online right now, whenever it is that you're viewing this, 
and you don't know Jesus Christ, you have never received the love of God, here's an opportunity for you. If you're here in this room and you don't know the love, this is an opportunity for you. So if that's you and you want to receive the Lord, would you just slip your hand up? You just slip your hand up or just give me a thumbs up. You know, and we're going we're gonna to pray for you. If you're here today and you say, listen, I know the Lord, but I, I, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I need more. I need more. I've never asked for the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you how you receive him. By faith. Jesus said, just ask and you receive. That's how you receive him. By faith. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, this is all you need to do is just say, just say, Father, you said in your word. And we can all pray with him. That's it. Father, you said in your word. When I ask for the Holy Spirit, you'll give him to me. I ask now and receive him by faith in you. In Jesus' name. Listen, the Holy Spirit knows what to do. I thank God for you. You go ahead and clap your hands because this is a new day for you. You're experiencing some power that you've never experienced before. This is the change that you've been waiting on. Matter of fact, you're the change that somebody's been praying about. Coming to their life. What the Lord is manifesting in you is going to spread through your community. And you're going to see the Lord. If you're here today or even online, uh, to our online or our e-church, um, we thank God for you tuning in. For those who are viewing, if you want to become a part of this ministry, or even if you want to know how to support this ministry, Jubilee Training Center, a place to begin. Well, I guess we're getting ready to tell you that. Yeah. If you want to become a part of Jubilee, I'm looking around. Is there anybody here today who has not made a commitment and you want to become a member or connected to this ministry, to Jubilee Training Center? If you're here today, would you just slip your hand up and we want to get some information to you and information from you. Glory to God. Glory to God. If that's you online, then please just let us know. And we want to get some information to you and from you. And uh, know that we thank God for each one of you. Amen. Amen. All right. This is how, this is one of the ways that you'll be able to give. Uh, cash app. Cash app. Yeah, cash app. I'm, I'm looking for some of the others. Because there's a few of them. I said, hey, let's get a few. But I got the cash app. That's what I'm going to use. And just a dollar sign, uppercase J, uppercase T, lowercase C, 7,000. J, T, lowercase C, 7,000. Um, and you could, um, yeah, we can go to the website. That's jubileetrainingcenter.org. Jubileetrainingcenter.org. All right. And for those of you who don't want to use the website, don't want to do Cash App, you can send your check, money <laughs> order, to 7000 Franklin Boulevard, yeah. Suite 560, Sacramento, California, 95823. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, we thank God for you. Uh, we thank God for you. I want you to share this. Amen. Everybody Amen. in this place, I want you to go to... Uh, it's going to be Jerome Justin McGee. I think that's where it went to. And I want you to share it. If you got Facebook, anybody got Facebook in here? All right. Go to Jerome Justin McGee. And if, if that's the wrong one, go to Jerome J. McGee. If that's the wrong one, go to Jerome McGee. Go to one of them. But you're going to see. You're going to see. I should know my own. But anyway, uh, you're going to see this today. And I want you to share it. Amen. Write something. Yes. Post it on whatever other accounts you have, yes. but share it. I believe it's going to be a blessing to somebody. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Are you ready to give? Yes. All right. Looks like you're you really ready. You already got envelopes. They on it. They are on it. Thank God for us. Listen, folks. You have been giving and you've been supporting even through the pandemic for the time that we was closed. There are some places that were not able to reopen, but your your faithfulness allowed us to continue to serve and be a blessing to others. And we thank you. There were times when 
Um, my wife doesn't want me talking about her, but uh, she'd, be, she'd be cooking and preparing meals for some of the seniors and the homeless. So every day, every Sunday, we was out on the streets. We was on the streets and, and uh, just ministering to people. And, and she was baking goods for her children. And uh, sometimes we would spend five hours on the road, uh, just going from house to house, dropping off goodies, put them on the door. Five hours. I told her, I said, we could have gone to Los Angeles and been on the way back. But five hours. It was a blessing. We looked forward to Sundays. And um, I look forward to Sundays. Amen. I thank God that we're able to see each other. For those of you who are still uh, in person, well, uh, in, in place or online, we thank God for you, your continued support. And, uh, whether you're a member of Jubilee or wherever it is that you're being faithful, just be faithful. You can never get too much word, y'all. As long as it's the right stuff. There's the right stuff going on in this house. No matter who stands in front of you, it's the right stuff. We've got these ministers who have been serving. We're going to have to meet with the ministers real soon. I want you to tune in on Wednesdays. Make sure we have your email address. Tune in on Wednesdays. We're going to continue to meet online. Uh, Zooming on Wednesdays. We're going to be doing that for a little while. Zooming on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. All right. Today is the 10th. My God. My God. All right. Well, uh, Sharon, you might as well come on up and pray for the offering and Send us home and to our online uh, viewers, we bless you in the name of the Lord. We look forward to the very next time we can spend this time, these moments together. In Jesus' name, know that you are blessed because the Lord says that you are. And you are empowered to prosper because you apply the word. Amen.